Praise his name. Matthew chapter 19. We're going to start reading from verse 23. Hallelujah. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Praise his name. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven, and again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? Verse 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible. He said, with men, these things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Let's raise our hands and worship the Lord. God, we love you. We thank you. We appreciate you for who you are. God, I thank you for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for this congregation of children of God that are serving you. God, for this pastor and pastor's wife, let your anointing be in this house. Let your blessings flow in a mighty way, oh God. Let us feel your glory this morning. Hallelujah. We give you all the praise. Amen. And the church says amen. God bless you. You may be seated this morning. I want to preach for just a little while on a message that God had given me some time ago. And I, of course, preached it in at New Life Apostolic Church in Gallup. And uh, the design of it was to inspire, to encourage, and to motivate. Now, I want you to realize that God can only do what you will let him do. God wants to move in every service. As a matter of fact, God is sitting there waiting right now, I believe, to motivate anybody that will step out of the ordinary and say, this morning, I need a brand new touch. I need inspiration. God is waiting for us. But I want to preach this morning about the power of optimism. <clears throat> Amen. You see, optimism is a mental attitude reflecting a belief or hope that the outcome of a specific endeavor or the outcomes in general will be positive, favorable, and desirable. Basically, a common idiom to illustrate optimism is an optimist will say, and when they see a glass, and they will say it is half full, while a pessimist will say the glass is half empty. Amen. Too many times in the apostolic uh, movement, uh, there are too many pessimistic spirits. Somebody says, man, we're going to have revival, and we're going to see five people get the Holy Ghost. Uh, that is being optimistic. Others say, well, we'll be lucky to have a visitor. God is looking for a church and a people that will have an optimistic attitude about a move of his spirit. I don't know about you, but I didn't come to church this morning with a pessimistic attitude. I came here this morning to believe that God is going to do what God can do. Hallelujah. Don't tell me God is not in this house. Don't tell me God can't do something great. No, I believe that God is going to move upon every church, every child of God that gives him a chance. That is an optimistic spirit and attitude. 
I told the church in Gallup, New Mexico, if you don't want to have revival, then y'all are dismissed. Go home. But as for me and God, I believe that something good is about to happen. As for me and those that believe and are optimistic, we're going to see revival and regardless of what those that don't believe feel. Hallelujah. You see, the term optimist derives from the Latin word optimum, which simply means best. I don't believe in second best. I don't believe in a halfway move of God. I don't believe that God wants this church to come here and just feel a little bit of God and be satisfied. Your pastor's preaching his guts out. The players are singing with everything they got. Let's get optimistic and let's say, God, this morning we're going to do the best we can. We're going to do the best we can in our worship, in our praise, in our faith in you. Hallelujah. I told uh, some of the leadership this morning, and I've told uh, your pastor, <clears throat> forgive me, my voice is a little raspy. I've been preaching every service, it seems like, and I don't preach a little bit. I'm like your pastor. You just let it go. Amen. But I told them when I went to Gallup, there were 60 people. I had an optimistic attitude. We're going to have a move of God. We're going to see revival, and we're going to see growth. I feel that same spirit here this morning. I said revival is what God wants. Your worship, your praise is letting the devil know I'm an optimistic child of God. I'm going to reach for the best. I'm not going to play second best with the devil I'm going to play the best with God. And over the last several years, we've grown to over 400, still growing, thriving. Why? Because of an optimistic attitude, a mindset that says, hey, let's have church. When you walk through the doors, let's don't have a normal church service. No, this is not about being comfortable. It's about being on fire for God. It's about telling the devil this morning, we're going to do something for Jesus, regardless of what the devil tries to do, I'm going to be optimistic about what God is doing in my life. The word optimistic in the typical sense of the word is defined as expecting the best possible outcome. Woo! When the world says you can't, an optimistic child of God says, oh, but God can. I tell you, when, when the bank says you can't get the money, the God we serve through an optimistic child of God says, God will provide the money. When we bought the building we're in, uh, we, we, we had paid off our old building in the first uh, uh, eight, nine months. We paid off the building we was in. We grew and, and grew and grew and outgrew it. Uh, and I told them, we've got to find a church building, something big enough in this city. I began to look. There were those that said, well, pastor, uh, can't we just split the church services and have a morning and a noon? And I said, oh, no, 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 no. We're going to gather under the same roof all together. But they said it would be easy. We don't have the money. I said, why do you say we don't have the money when God owns the cattle on a thousand hills? That's an optimistic attitude. That's the mindset that God is looking for in this church. Amen. Like he did in Gallup. We was having a committee meeting and one of the men there said, Pastor, what about the old one day or not day school? I said, what about it? He said, well, it's empty. I said, let's go look at it. We jumped in the vehicles, drove up to the top of the mountain. And I looked at that school. I walked around it. I set up a meeting. Now, listen to me. This is an optimistic attitude. You pessimistic, you can go ahead and feel negative all you want. But the rest of us, we're going to believe that God can. If it's his will, it's going to work out. If it's his will, he's going to turn it around. If it's his will, he's going to make a way. I met with the 
superintendent of schools, Mr. Mike Hyatt, great guy, fantastic fellow. We met down there, him and his assistant, uh, and four or five of my board members. We walked through it, and I thought, wow. This is going to be something. He told me, he said, now, Pastor Fisher, this building just appraised it just recently for $3.2 million. My old heart sunk for just a moment, and I looked at my board members, and they looked at me, and their eyes were big. Amen. I said, okay, thank you, fine. We're still interested. We walked out, and a couple of the board members said, Pastor, can we really do this? And I told them, we can't, but he can. We can't. But God will. Listen to me, saint of God. I feel something in this building. The same thing I felt in Gallup. God is about to do something for an optimistic mindset and attitude of apostolic people that will believe that he can. Well, they shut the school down. And I tried to get loans, went to our bank. They said, okay, the last two weeks before it was supposed to close, they backed out on us. I thought, my goodness, now God, our building was packed. Our parking lot was so bad. They was parking up and down the streets, making people mad. And uh, I thought, now God, we got to do something. And uh, brother, brother. Nathaniel Haney called me up from Stockton, California, CLC, called me up and said, Brother Fisher. I said, yes, sir. Now, he never calls me. I knew of him. I didn't really know him, even though I lived by him for years. He said, listen, I was praying this morning, and God told me to come and preach you a revival. Now, now, Elder, usually when people call me and say, hey, I'm coming and you want to, I'm ready to preach. I said, well, I'll put your name down and I'll pray about it. And when I need you, I'll call you. I get calls all the time. Amen. And I, I, I said, okay. I said, Brother Haney, knowing who he was and knowing what he's done for God. I said, when do you want to come? We set a date. He came. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I don't like long-winded preachers, Elder. I, I, I kind of... They asked me, how long do you have? I said, let's start at 45 minutes and maybe an hour. Anyway, well, Brother Haney showed up on a Wednesday night, and we got him there. Wednesday night, brother, I turned the, mess, the, the mic over to him. He preached for three hours. The building was packed. I'm watching to see how many going to slip out and go home early. Not a one of them left. Thursday night, three hours. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. The place was packed. We put other chairs out. Friday night, hallelujah, three hours. Sunday morning, two to three hours. Sunday night, two to three hours. I'm thinking to myself, God, what is going on? And then that, con that, that concept uh, and that feeling rose in my spirit. God said, if you be optimistic and be positive, I'll show you what I can do. Amen. In your church. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost here right now. You've got to get the mindset. It doesn't matter how long God takes what matters is is how willing you are to take what God gives you Monday morning before we took him to the airport he said brother Fisher can you go show me that old school building I said, yes sir it'd been kind of a battle I kind of let it lay dormant for just a little bit Praying about it, kind of disgusted with the bank. <clears throat> Hope there's no bankers here. <clears throat> Amen. And uh, we, we went to the school. We got out. Now, mind you, at this time, people had broken into the school. They did some damage inside. And everything was, you know, not too great, but it was still a great building. We walked around the whole building peeked inside. We stopped by the front of the building where our cars were, where my vehicle was parked. And he said, looked at me and he said, Brother Fisher, God wants you to have this building. 
I look at him, and all of a sudden, through all of the doubt and through all of the frustration, through all the attitude, brothers and sisters, that optimistic spirit rose back up and said, you're right, Brother Haney. I'm going to get after it again. Amen. Within two months, we closed escrow on that building. Amen. But that's not even the best part, Brother Davenport. They said it was worth $3.2 million. After the appraiser got done, we bought that building for $395,000. Woo! You tell me that God can't. I'll tell you. You're listening to the wrong God. Come on. We serve a God that wants revival in his churches. We serve a God that wants you to have the power of an optimistic spirit in your life. I didn't come here to worry about what you think is bad. I came here to search and reach for the good things of God. We didn't come here, amen, to criticize or put each other down. We come to feel, amen, the power of God again. An optimistic spirit is something that is so powerful. Optimism is influenced by environmental factors. Those of you or those of you that run with run can create a spirit of optimism or a pessimistic spirit. The ones you run around with, the ones you hang with. Man, that they're always talking negative, always talking down, and they're always feeling so blue. Go find somebody that's on fire for God. I'm sorry. You say, well, I'm trying to help them. Oh, no. If they want to be helped, they're going to get to this altar, and they're going to get a good praying through, and they're going to get optimistic. If they want to be helped, friend, they'll get down there. In the meantime, you hang around with those that believe in the power of God and are revival attitude I tell our young people I tell our church people people don't you hang around with those 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 those, those <laughs> spiritual winos or whiners Come on, hang around with somebody that's a prayer warrior. Hang around with somebody that believes that God's about to explode this thing wide open. Hang around with somebody that believes this building is not big enough to contain what God is about to do in your future. Hey, this is the great building. Thank you, Jesus. It's not big enough for an optimistic church. It's not big enough for an optimistic individual. Why? Because God wants to give you more. God wants to bless you with greater things. Come on now, we're apostolic. I said we're apostolic. Apostolics get a little crazy. Apostolics do little dances. Apostolics run the aisles. Apostolics get optimistic about a move of God in the church. Don't hang around with the crybabies. Come on, start hanging around those that want to have revival. Amen. Hallelujah. I choose to only be around those who believe in the unbelievable. I said, I only want to be around those that can see the unseeable. Woo, I feel something here right now. I want to be around those who are optimistic that says, hey, this is not our greatest service. This is not our greatest moment. Greater things are about to happen in this church. Hallelujah. It is also suggested that optimism can be learned. So if you've been feeling a little down, uh, a little negative, a little bummed, come to church. Don't sit back where you can watch what everybody else is doing that offends you. Get closer to the front row where the fire is, if it bothers you. If you can sit on the front row and worship, or the back row and worship God, great. But if you can't, I tell them, get to the front. Amen. Get closer to the fire. Why? Because you've been looking and listening to all the things you shouldn't look at and listen to. It's time to get optimistic. Teach yourself to worship. Of God. Teach yourself to have a good attitude. 
we got to have unity. I said, we got to have unity. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're my brother. You're my sister. Go ahead. Now, did you really mean it? Come on, they're not your enemy. They're not your enemy. Your brothers and sisters in the kingdom of God, they're not the ones you fight with. Let's get optimistic about who we are in Jesus Christ. We're a child of the king. I said, we're a child of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Having a spirit of optimism as a child of God is one of the most desired traits that a child of God should seek after. When you first get the Holy Ghost, pastor, men, when they come out of here floating, woo, I'm in love with Jesus. A oh, man would come staggering out under drunk in the spirit or whatever it is, and, and everything's good, and about three or four days they're feeling pretty good. And then all of a sudden the devil says, well, let's punch at their bubble. Somebody in the church says something that hurts your feelings. The boss chews you out. Bosses don't do that. And all of a sudden, that optimistic honeymoon feeling is gone. What do you do about that? <laughs> I'll tell you what you do. You say, oh, no, devil, not today. I'm going back to church. I'm going. I'm going. I'm. A, I'm not going to give Pastor a bucket full of of complaining. No, I'm going to church, and I'm going to talk to Jesus again, and I'm going to get a brand new touch in that church service. I'm going to turn this around. Why? Because I want to have the power of an optimistic Holy Ghost Spirit in me. I want to be a blessing to my pastor, to the church, and the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I want to seek after the good things of God. When I first came into this, I was a wretched devil. Yeah, yeah, so were you. Come on, if you were a sinner, you were no good. You were on your way to hell, just like I was. But brother and pastor, when I came into this, I mean, I, I was doing drugs, drinking, partying, stealing, lying, doing everything else. And God got a hold of me at an apostolic camp. Brother Von Morton was preaching the camp. And, woo, and I'll tell you what, it set me on fire. I came out of that tabernacle and I felt like I was floating. I told myself then, this is better than any drug. This is better than any alcohol. This is better than any high this world has. I began to Seek after an optimistic attitude with Jesus. Come on, saint of God. If you've been fighting with the depression or discouragement or doubt and you don't believe in your pastor, let's get this fixed right now. Let's get optimistic about what God is about to do in this city. Amen. Hallelujah. I told them when I, I'll go ahead and tell you. They voted me in at Gallup, New Mexico. I told Terry Pugh, Brother Pugh, from Odessa, Texas. They wanted me to go try out for the church in Gallup. I said, nope. I don't want to. Why not? Who wants to live in New Mexico? Now, mind you, Brother Laulu, I lived in Taft. That was the backside of the backside of the desert. I mean, oil field, hot, pumping units, road runners, rattlesnakes, hot. And I thought, I'm not living in any place that even resembles that. I was in, living in Grand Junction, Colorado. I resigned from the district board in California. I was on the board for the Western District for several years. I told them adios. They didn't want me to. I said, I'm going to Colorado. I don't know why. I had a great job making tremendous money, and my boss thought I was crazy. And by the time I got to Colorado, I thought I was crazy. My wife's car was all piled up with clothes. She didn't have room for nothing. And my truck, and, oh, anyway, it looked like it looked like the grapes of wrath going down the road with that big old trailer. All I needed was a rocking chair on top. 
but he kept after me. Why? Because he was optimistic. When I went to Gallup, I'll be honest with you, we drove, I don't know if any of you have ever been through Shiprock, New Mexico. Oh, dear Jesus. I thought Taft was bad. I came from Cortez, Colorado. Me and my wife, you remember this? I'm driving, I'm looking around. I said, oh, no, no, no. I said, no, this is not funny, God. <laughs> no. I was ready to turn around. You know what she said? You promised them you would be there. But I'm looking around thinking, oh, God, don't do this to me. You see, we have a tendency to see the ugly when God wants to show us the beautiful. Listen to me, friend. <laughs> We drove a little further south, another 30, 40 miles, and all of a sudden, Brother Davenport, Fort, I seen trees. I seen mountains all of a sudden. I thought, hey, maybe. You see, I like to hunt and fish. Hey, that's not sin. I like outdoors. Brother Pugh used that on me. He said, man, there's elk, there's bear, there's deer. And I asked him, I said, are you trying to bribe me? He asked me, is it working? I said, it's starting to. So I was expecting more. Well, when we got to Gallup, it wasn't too bad. Trees, it was different, but it was nice. And okay, cliffs. And, and I'll never forget it. We went to the first church service. And man, about 60 of them, man, we had a shout in time. They ran the aisles. And I'm going, huh, maybe New Mexico ain't so bad. Met with the board that night. <laughs> We had another runaway service. Two brand new ones got the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, this is it. Come on. It's time to think positive. It's time to get optimistic. I'm talking to somebody here this morning. You've let the devil make you think that this is where you need to be. It is where you need to be. This is what God wants for this church. Amen. He gave you a man of God and a, and a first lady. Stand behind him. Get optimistic about it. And those two that didn't want us, yes, thank you. Six months later, we thought out me and Sister Fisher were too old. We was 57, 56, 57. Careful, you young fellows. That's, that is old, no. But, and the former pastor was younger. And they thought we wouldn't have the drive or the go. Let me tell you something about an optimistic man of God. Look at this building. Look what God is doing. God's taking it. I know, amen, Brother Davenport and others, you did your job. You did your part. But what you needed, amen, just like I'll need eventually again. Hey, I need to know that when I'm done, another man of God with an optimistic attitude that's going to say, come on, let's build, let's grow, let's believe, it's going to take over the elms. And that is what has happened in this church. Amen. God knows what he's doing. Man, we started all these ministries. We, we had, had something going on every night, every day. And that couple that didn't vote for us came and apologized. Pastor, we're so sorry. Why? We didn't vote for you. I said, I know. I know who you is. Everybody done snitched on you. But I didn't treat them any different. And I said, and I know why you did it. You thought we were too old. She goes, will you please slow down? You're killing us. I said, no, a church, a man of God on fire is going to keep going. They're going to be optimistic about what God is about to do. Look, at I see chairs that are empty here. We need to fill these chairs up. Amen. Oh, but Pastor Fisher, uh, Pastor Crow, uh, I've been inviting people, then invite them again. Go to the grocery store, invite them to church. Amen. Go to the restaurant, invite them to church. You know, we think going to the restaurant's all about a, a steak. You know how many people I've invited, amen, from our restaurants that has come to church? Amen. We got people all over that town that walk into the house of God because me, Sister Fisher, and others in the church are inviting them. Come on. Get optimistic. If you invite them, they'll come. But you got to do your part. You got to believe that God is going to do his part. Every 
Holy Ghost filled person in this building should be living in an attitude of optimism. The glass ain't half empty. It's half full. The church isn't half empty. It's full. <laughs> That's optimistic. Amen. That's been having an optimism attitude. Oh, I see empty chairs. Oh, yeah, but I see chairs uh, that's about to be ready to be filled. Yeah, but Brother Fisher, I, 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 I don't know. I've been trying. No, 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 no. Come on. Get that out of your mindset. Uh, there's another door to be knocked. Uh, there's another Bible study to be preached. Uh, there's another move of God that's about to take place. Uh, let me tell you something. Your pastor's bringing in a man here. Amen. That's going to preach. Uh, Brother Roger Johnson, you're in for a treat. I know that man personally. I just preach for him. He's on fire for God. Hallelujah. I tell you what's going to happen if you'll get behind the man of God and the church and get optimistic about it. We are going to turn this city right side up. Hallelujah. Now turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad you're here. Woo. I'm not done. I will not go three hours. A pessimistic attitude will say our new church building is too big. An optimistic attitude will say it's not big enough. <laughs> we bought our new building. <laughs> And man, was it a mess. We had we took out about 20 of those big old giant bins of trash. We painted. We'd have people down there on the off-service nights cleaning and painting and doing this and doing that. Uh, and, and I was waiting for the complainers to, to begin to complain. But guess what? Uh, uh, something happened to the church. Uh, and something is happening in this church. Uh, hallelujah. An attitude that says there is no job too big. Uh, there is no job too difficult. Uh, amen. I heard your pastor say. Said, there's those of you that are cleaning and doing things at this church on your own. Amen. Reconnaissance. Listen to me. That is an optimistic attitude. This church is great. It's given to you by God, but it is not the final product. Ooh. Your pastor has an optimistic spirit. I've listened to him. He's already told me things. I'm not going to tell you. He can tell you later if he wants to. Things that he sees. Things that he believes is about to happen. Things that he sees that he wants to happen. What that is is an optimistic spirit and attitude. Come on, if he comes to you and says, hey, as I heard this young man say, we got to raise $23,000 for the sidewalk. And you go, ooh. Our God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Our God, amen, is big enough and great enough to do anything. And don't you tell me he can't. When we bought our buildings in Taft, it was God. Amen. When we bought our buildings where I'm at now, it's God. We have found favor with the, with the city and with the, with the councilmen. Amen. With the building department. We have found favor all throughout our area. Why? Because we are optimistic about what God is about to do. Come on. I feel this in the Holy Ghost for this church. Church, there is a spirit here of optimism that is powerful. We want brand new babies, then invite them. Men knock on doors. This man is not the one that's supposed to win the babies. You're supposed to win the babies. Get optimistic about it. And I tell you, I have people in the church now. When I got there, they wasn't doing this. They're doing it now. And they're teaching Bible study, home Bible studies. They ain't calling pastors. Say, Pastor, I got a home Bible study. Can you teach it? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Come on, get optimistic about this. 
Get you a home Bible study. Talk to pastor. He'll find, help you find the right one and start teaching them. And young people are teaching young people. Young ladies are teaching young ladies. Couples are teaching couples. We have over 20 couples now teaching home Bible studies. You have the same capability here right now. You just got to get optimistic about it. It can be done. God wants it done. You see a pastor in a church that becomes full of the power of an optimistic spirit of God is a people that will never stop planning for growth. Your pastor's already doing that. I'm doing it. I told our church when we bought the school building, Made the gym into a sanctuary. It's 5,400 square foot sanctuary. Filled it up. I told them that, hey, I don't believe this is where we're going to stop. Come on now. I feel this here right now. Same feeling, same spirit. I said, we're going to, we're going to, I feel we're going to have a church running a thousand people before you know it. I had the, Brother Haney told me that. He said it from the pulpit. I didn't tell him. He spoke it. He said, this church is going to grow to at least a 1,000 people. Randy Underwood said it. Another evangelist said it. I didn't tell him. God did. Listen to me, saints of God. Get optimistic about what God is about to do in this church, in this city. God is not through. You say, well, can we? I don't know if we'll ever get a 1,000. Please. I know it'll make your pastor old and gray-headed. But that's okay. We're going to get there anyway. As you notice, I'm getting there and bald-headed too. Doesn't matter. Amen. And now we're fixing to build. Amen. Another building that'll seat 750. Why? Because an optimistic attitude and spirit that has consumed our church. I feel that same spirit in this building. There's men and women in here, Pastor, that's going to walk behind you. Every one of you should stand behind this man of God. Why? Because great growth, great revival is around the corner. Hallelujah. Don't tell me it can't be done. My ministerial staff, I have several of them. Boy, if they even act like they're negative. Oh, no, 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 no. Man, it can be done. It's going to be done. Amen. There is power in the spirit of optimism. I said there's power in the spirit, amen, that believes that God can. Amen. What you see here and what you've seen over the years from Brother Davenport now transferred over, amen, to Brother Crow, Pastor Crow. Amen. This is a spirit of optimism. Hey, this is the beginning. We started out small. I don't know if you started this church or not, Elder. Amen. But it started out. But look where it's going. Look around you. Every soul, every chair. Every every drop of paint on these walls is an optimistic attitude that says, look out, devil. Look out. Look out, Satan. Look out. We come to you in the name of the Lord. Something is about to happen. Hallelujah. When I first got the text here a month or so ago, brother, Ulu sent it to me. He said, Pastor, bro, I want you to Come, what have you? I'm thinking, okay. I think I was in, uh, I don't know where I was. I wasn't in town, out of state. And I got that, and I'm thinking, okay, well, I'll get back with him. I had an anniversary service to be at last weekend. I'm supposed to be going to Mississippi and different places and still trying to pastor Gallup, New Mexico, New Life Apostolic Church. I'm also the interim pastor for Winslow, Arizona. Amen. I bought, got them a building, and they got their own building, and it closes on the 7th. Amen. Things are going forward. I'm so busy, 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 busy. I, I finally canceled out. I was on my way to California last Friday. Uh, on a Friday, I got the flag staff, and the Holy Ghost said no. I stopped. I turned around and went back home. <laughs> God spoke to me and said, you're going to Phoenix. I don't know. God has a plan in everything he does. 
Listen to me. He's trying to make you realize that what you have is a powerful man of God, a powerful woman of God, a powerful church on fire for God. He's reaching to the church and the mindset of the church and said, saying, get optimistic about what he's about to do. I told you, Pastor, forgive me. I, I, I don't believe in anything but revival and growth. Don't tell me God cannot heal. Huh. My wife was diagnosed with cancer. We was at camp meeting when we got the we got the term, the, the call. That particular nurse, forgive me, I wasn't real happy with her. Called her up while we're there, just kind of blunt. And no compassion, but it doesn't matter. So we was a little upset, didn't know what was going on. I, I believe you was there at that time, Brother Lalulu. It was a camp meeting. I told a couple of the ministers and brethren, of course, it circulated through the ministry in the Western District. And there were several thousand people there. And uh, while I was out, I was the head of security and what have you, uh, a, a Brother Joseph Dominguez, he was a missionary, Came by the camp and told Sister Fisher, he said, Sister Fisher, you're going to be okay. God is not done with you yet. That night at the church service, several thousand people in that there congregation and, and uh, uh, all the ministers and different ones, board members, everybody in the platform, they called Sister Fisher out and we, she came up to the front and I went down there with her and they began to lay hands on her, Pastor Crow. I'll tell you what, when you serve an optimistic God, amen, God can if it's his will and man, God moved upon my wife and God, amen, fixed that thing. She is cancer free and she has been for many years. I'm telling you, God can do it if we'll just be optimistic about it. I preached about a faith about a week ago. The different levels of faith. Too many apostolics have intellectual faith. They got smarts. They read the Bible. Woo! God's a faithful God, but they don't have emotional faith. They don't have an attachment to what God can really do. We can talk about it, but talking about it and doing it is two different things. Come on, God is looking for emotionalism in our faith. He's looking for men and women that just don't know about it, but they're willing to apply what God is going to do. I feel that in the Holy Ghost this morning. This church has faith. Friend, be careful of the intellectual attitude. Get behind the man of God. Get optimistic about what God is about to do and let your faith soar to a level it's never been before. I'm almost done, but I sure feel this. Don't tell me that wretched old sinner can't be filled with the Holy Ghost. Pastor Fisher, the boy, you don't know this person. You're right, but Jesus Christ does. <laughs> Look at us. Except by the mercies of God, we were all just like they are. Come on, ex-drug addicts, ex-alcoholics, uh, ex-troublemakers. But Jesus got a hold of us, sister. Jesus got a hold of us. Uh, he turned us around. Why? Because somebody was optimistic enough to say, you come to church and God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Uh, he'll change you. Aren't you glad that somebody cared and somebody believed and was optimistic? Having an optimistic spirit will create a higher level of faith in your life. You ever had a bad day? A day when you thought, God, I wish I'd just roll over in bed and woke up tomorrow. Been there. Been rough all day. Not, some, not so good things have happened. Got a flat tire on the way to work, to school. Got chewed out. Somebody almost hit you. Just one thing after the other. Your attitude gets worse and worse. Then one of your wonderful uh, pessimistic friends texts you a message. Guess what? Someone's so sad about you. Why would you do that? Why? 
I tell you why, because of a pessimistic attitude. An optimistic attitude is not going to spread ugly things about anybody. An optimistic attitude is going to say, hey, do you remember what pastor preached the other night? Woo! Instead of giving you trash or garbage, uh, amen. So you had one of those bad days. And you had to force yourself to get up and go to church. But when you walk through the doors... The winds and the power of the Holy Ghost, you feel it. Prayer warriors are praying at the altar. All of a sudden, all that pessimistic, negative feeling goes away. All of a sudden, an optimistic faith begins to rise up. Uh, come on, I feel this in the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. Some of you need to wake up. Uh, amen. And realize that God is waiting on you. You have not been waiting on him. Uh, he's been waiting on you. Amen. You see, many times in life, it's easy to get pessimistic, negative. But Jesus Christ is in this house. And he's saying, listen, if you just believe, all things are possible. That $23,000 you need for that sidewalk, guess what? It's there. That's right. It's it, where? Where? Tell me where so I can go get it. I'll tell you where. It's in your level of faith. It's in your optimistic attitude. You say, I don't see it right now. Amen. But I love that scripture in Hebrews, the 11th tra chapter. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. God is about to show this church some things you've never seen. Oh, come on now. You're going to have preachers that are going to preach messages that will teach you, and lead you to a great level of optimistic, positive attitude. Come to church on fire. Don't come in here dragging like somebody just stole your best puppy. No, come to church with a joy. I, I was preaching in Mississippi, and I told them, I said, listen, first service I got there, the last time I preached there, and I, I said, I'll come, but I want you all to be having a week of a fasting, church fasting, every day, somebody fasting. I want, I want you to have a, a prayer chain because I'm not going to fly three-quarters of the way across the country, take several days out of my schedule just for a bunch of people that are half pessimistic. Church of about 350. Good people. But I said, if I come out there and take this time, and I do feel to come, we're going to have a move of God. But to have that, I need your help. Pastor said, they'll do it. Okay. Just before we flew out there, I talked to him. I said, have they been fasting and praying? He said, man. He said, Bishop. He said, they have been fasting and they have been praying. I said, okay. Well, we're fixing to get on the plane. We'll be there in a while. We got there and that Sunday morning, I started out on a Sunday morning. I come in. I thought, I'm going to do this different. I'm going to go in swinging. And the title of my message was Rattling the Gates of Hell. Amen. I tell you what, that place coming good. I've never seen anybody get the Holy Ghost that before. Nobody was ever baptized while I was there. Amen. It, it just seemed so difficult. That trip, uh, something happened. Fifteen people got filled with the Holy Ghost and came back to church that morning. And by the time we left, uh, there was like 25 or 30. Why? It's not because of me. It's because that church uh, began to think uh, with an optimistic, positive attitude. I told those people, though, that, son, that, that morning before I left, I said, I, I want you to do something for me. From the pulpit, I told them this. Sister Fisher, she'll remember this. And I said, uh, the Bible says we're to enter into his gates with what? And into his courts with what? I said, when you walk into the house of God, you should be walking in with thanksgiving and praise already in your heart. So I told that church, I said, here's what I want you to do. This is going to be different. 
when I, before you come, when you first get here, instead of going to the prayer room, I want you out in the parking lot. Now, Tishmingo, Mississippi, everybody knows what's going on everywhere. I love this beautiful place in the winter. Summer, not so much. Hot. Muggy. But they were out there when I pulled up. I'll never forget it. They were walking. There's probably 50 of them praising God or so outside in that front parking lot. And I walked in. I thought, "Uh uh-oh, something good is about to happen. And when they come back into that church about church time, brothers and sisters, I'll tell you what. They was praising God. They were shouting. And that church had never done that before. We had a breakthrough. Another about 10 got the Holy Ghost. New families that had left had come back. I'm telling you. You've got to get optimistic about what God wants to do in your life in this church. Just give me a few more moments. Cancer is not healed by a pessimistic spirit. It's healed by an optimistic spirit of faith. (laughs) If you speak in the spirit of pessimism you'll never see great victory in your life but if you'll speak with a spirit of an optimistic spirit nothing will be impossible for you I could go on all afternoon about what God has done for us in Gallup and what he did in Taft and what he's done throughout my life amen how how the devil did his best to destroy amen but God has always lifted up why because of an optimistic attitude amen this church amen has been challenged your pastor has been challenged amen not only by the devil but by people in the area I'm here to tell you God has turned that around around. God is going to set this church on fire. God is going to show you what he can do. You've got to stay optimistic about what God can do. Hallelujah. Finally, I get a musician up here, please. I believe that every church service is designed by God to be a powerful church service. We shouldn't have just a normal church service. No, no, no. That's man. That's not God. God wants us to come here ready. If you had chandeliers, we don't have them either. I use that gesture, but to swing from the chandeliers. Man, I'm out of the Modesto Church, Modesto, California, where Brother J.D. Danby, then Randy Keyes took it, and I left just before he came. That's my home church. It's a revivalist church. It's on fire. It's growing. It grew, and Brother Keyes took it to great levels. But when we young people would have church, now, Pastor, this, this drove my pastor crazy. We'd shout, and we had the windows open. We had coolers in those days. We didn't have these AC things, and it was hot. But we'd shout and sweat pouring down us, you know, and and meant God would move. And those windows would be open right by the platform. And 75 young people was up there. And and all of a sudden, we'd all start jumping out the windows. And we'd shout in the front yard, in the front lawn. And people were stopping on the side of the highway. and, And God was moving. Why am I telling you this? It's time to get optimistic. It's time to believe. Don't be ashamed of who you are. You know why I get so radical? Because of what I was trained and taught by my pastor in the church I got in. Went out on a Sunday school visitation. Took the church bus. About 75 of us crowded in there. We invited all these kids. and We had over 400 kids in the Sunday school classes that came in. But we come back from that Sunday school visitation on a Saturday morning. We used to do that all the time, Elder. I've been after our church. we got to start doing this. Come on. But we got to see him. Remember the old accordions they used to play all the time? You never see those no more. Man, there was, we had a sister on there, Sister, uh, sister Weems now, there in Texas, pastoring. And man, she was singing, and, 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 and 
God begin to move and all of us young people that had just been out with Raggedy Ann and Andy's suits on, gorilla suits, clown suits, handing out candy, inviting kids. We, we begin to worship and, and we pull up into that church parking lot in the middle of the day, 133 Chualdon Boulevard, a four lane thoroughfare right in front of the church. And man, we come out of that, that bus shouting and dancing, all 75 people shouting everywhere. We called the traffic jam. People were stopping, watching, like what in the world is going on? I'll tell you what's going on. When a church on fire uh, gets on fire and they get optimistic, they don't care what the world thinks. I remember in Taft, they'd go out the back door and run around the church all the way and back in. Why am I telling you this? We gotta get on fire for God. You guys know how to worship. I've already seen that. I've seen the response. But guess what? There's another level that God's going to take this church through this man of God. A level that you never dreamed of. A revival attitude. Amen. That when a sinner walks through that door, they're going to go, I feel something. Man, I just got Jesus bumps right now. When a sinner walks through that door, when we have a spirit of optimistic worship in this building, and when a sinner walks through that door, they're going to feel the joy and the power of God. Amen. They're going to know they have arrived. That's what God is looking for. And that's what God wants in this church. What spirit do you have this morning? Remember, there is power in a spirit of faith and optimism. Luke 18 and 27 tells us the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Oh, I'm so thankful for the spirit of the Holy Ghost and the power of optimism. I'm thankful that you have a pastor that believes that God can. Come on, let's raise our hands. I feel the Holy Ghost moving throughout this building. 